this is Whiskey and Wool, and you are watching episode 15 of my Knitter's Life series. My name is Shannon, and you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Whiskey and Wool, no E in Whiskey. Um, on Instagram, there are two extra O's in the word wool. Um, yeah, welcome. How are you? How are you doing? I hope you're doing well. It is early August and really hot, <laughs> but I'm knitting. <laughs> uh, I did a little spinning, but not a lot. Um, but yeah, so today I'm going to talk to you about crochet, about knitting, and yeah, a little bit of spinning, and I have some really special stash that I got. Um, but first, I'm going to start with uh, what I always start every episode with, is a little whiskey or gin chat. I guess what I'm trying to say is if I don't have an editing cue right now telling you where to skip to, there won't be any whiskey or gin chat. We're gonna go right to knitting. Um, but if there's a cue, uh, that is because I'm going to be doing a very special chat with a friend of mine, Anthony, who was on the channel a year ago uh, helping me taste whiskey. And uh, he offered to help me again this weekend, but I'm not sure when that's going to fit in. And it may end up just being in next week's, uh, or next my next episode, episode 16. And there may just be no chat in this one. Because I don't want to hold up the video release um, too long uh, if it's too complicated for us to do the chat timely, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. I'll see you soon, or maybe not, I'll just see you. <laughs> Currently drinking my usual orange juice with seltzer. Actually, this has a little splash of grapefruit in it. I, um, I always have this after I do cardio. Um, if I do cardio early in the morning, like a run, I usually run. Uh, so I'll have, uh, I usually need like something that gives me some quick sugar, so. Um, yeah, okay. I have a couple finished objects. This, this. Let me talk about this one first because it's less complicated. <laughs> this is Andrea Mowry Stripes sweater. Um, I had a lot of trouble with the figuring out the color repeat and stuff, and I talked all about that a few episodes back, so you can go back and find that. Uh, if you are curious about how I arrived at these, um, there is a really good kind of color lesson in there. Um, I am a university professor. I taught studio arts classes up until they closed the program that I was teaching in, and uh, now I teach courses on culture, um, some on culture and appearance, but some also... Anyway, I'm well versed in color theory, <laughs> so I have... I share with my viewers um, via this channel information about color and also information about design and uh, I'm a former knitwear designer in case you're it's your first time here um, and uh, I did it professionally um, and uh, yeah I yeah so I share any information about patterns uh, pattern making and um, things that I do uh, both in sewn and knitting uh, in order to make decisions, I'll, I share that process. That was the idea behind Knitter's Life, um, changing my uh, series name to Knitter's Life, to share more of my processes with you, and uh, also just like more of my everyday stuff. Um, yeah, so I'm coming to you from northern New Jersey, <laughs> where I work and live. Uh, so a lot of the clips that you're seeing are just of our garden and uh, the outside clips um, and me taking my my cute little cat out for walks he doesn't get to go outside unsupervised he must be supervised because he's too little to be out by himself um, <laughs> but he loves it he loves the company he looks for me um, mm -hmm. and uh, I rarely have problems with him uh, bolting away from me so it's it's all good how did I get done that not really sure. Anyway, this is, do I have the yarn hanging around? 
Oh yeah, it's behind me. But you know what? This is easier to grab, so I'm just gonna grab this. This is the yarn that I used, though. Uh, this one, th I used this color here. I did not use this color. This was a ball that I ended up not using. It's by La Bienname. It is Cash Merino in um, six different colorways, all the same, all the same yarn. Um, oops, I have a little in to weave in. <laughs> the pink is Pink You. This is La Bienname yellow. Uh, Air Guitar is the Gray Rainbow. Green is Lush. The Turquoise is Vespa Graffiti. There are three Vespa colors. This one it has tone on tone speckles. The peach is Ichigo, and yeah, that's those are my colors. And then this bright pink that I showed you is the colorway Sorry. Uh, part of my part of my trying to figure out what color I wanted um, to use. I had purchased that too. I did not use a lot of these skeins. I did not even use half of these six colors to make this sweater. Um, I think I made the 44 inch bust size maybe it's a large I'm not really I can't really remember the way that she did the sizing for this pattern this is a pattern by Andrea Maury I probably already put it on screen a um, couple different necklines in the pattern a couple different sleeve links in the pattern a couple different body links in the pattern I followed the directions um, for a long sleeve for the uh, crew neck this the tighter crew neck and for um, the regular length body, not the cropped body. I got a lot of growth <laughs> with this yarn. Um, the sleeves are, you know, a little, quite long as you can see, and the body length is, is pretty long as well. Um, I would say it's probably the length of this t-shirt that Martha's wearing. Um, Martha's waist, which is where my waist is, is right here. But I will also put a picture on screen of me wearing it that I'll take after the I'm done filming this um, video. So you can get an idea. Yeah, so I'm so excited that this is done. This was very mindless knitting. It's, and I really thought I was going to zoom through it because it's stripes. And I just thought that'll just help you because you're usually when you're knitting stripes or a pattern, you're just interested in seeing what's going to happen next. So it kind of can propel you forward. Um, that didn't really happen with this. I cast this on in March and just finished it last week. So that's quite a while for me. I usually don't take four months to make a sweater. Of course, I always have multiple projects. Uh, I have anywhere from three to five projects on the, on the needles at all times. <laughs> so um, some projects can take a little longer if I am distracted with something else, some other project um, that is appealing or just taking my attention. Yeah. So this is stripes. Um, I'm going to stick with knitting for a minute and show you another finished object. I also finished my third pair of Andrea Maori, Drea Renee, DRK, uh, everyday socks. Um, I started to knit socks this year using my own hand spun. Um, and uh, yeah, this is my third pair. The first pair I made ended up being too big for me and I gifted those to my sister and um, her feet are slightly bigger than mine so they were perfect. And the last two pair have been for me and they are, um, I don't know why I keep like not holding these straight so you can see them. I absolutely love this hand spun. This is from a um, small bat, a three ounce bat from a Stitch Together Studio. It was a club color called Imbolic, which is a holiday that occurs in February. It's a pagan, pagan holiday. <laughs> um, it's, I think the pagan holidays all kind of jive with uh, the position of the sun. So Imbolic is a, I don't know, it's some, it's a date in February. It's not always the same day. Um, but it's, you know, somewhere in the beginning of February. I absolutely love it. It felt very like, it felt like a good Halloween kind of vibe um, as I was knitting it. And I've also realized, so this is my third pair of socks, as I said, hand spun. This is the second pair that I've knit that have mohair in it. So I, when I spun the yarn, I was um, drafting in occasionally some mohair locks that had been that I had combed out and I think I really like that for socks I think it really kind of adds a little extra like 
fuzziness and warmth to it and also strength. So mohair can be a substitute for nylon. I don't know if this silk can also be a, a substitute for nylon. Um, I don't know if these have nylon in it. I don't remember off the top of my head. I know there's silk in it and I think the wool is merino. Um, I just don't recall, but I know, and I know there's mohair in it. So I don't know. I'm interested to see how these wear. I love wooly, warm, thick socks. Um, and that's, I usually wear smart wool socks. <laughs> I haven't really been a buyer into the whole hand knit sock thing until um, I started to spin. I started to spin two years ago, in case you're wondering. Um, and I just, yeah, I, I just didn't really like the feel of superwash yarn socks on my feet compared to the smart wool socks, which um, do have a significant amount of nylon too, but they tend to be thicker and fuzzier and just more comfortable. Maybe I also have a narrow foot. So this pattern seems to be working quite well for me and my narrow foot. I am a little concerned about, let me show you this, about the heel. So the heel ends up being um, stockinette stitch. I think you can see it. I know it's black, but you can see that the, most of the sock is two by two rib, but there is some stockinette stitch on the heel. That's the place that probably gets the most wear on socks. Um, if you're putting your foot inside a shoe. So I'm curious how that's going to hold up. Um, and I'm not, I'm not against doing some mending, so I'm prepared uh, to do that. I do have a bit of this yarn left. So I think what I may do um, down the road, if I end up, if this ends up being a thing that I love to wear and end up doing more of, I may end up just making like a big jar, you know, to put on display of all my little bits of leftover sock yarn so that I have it somewhere. So when I need to mend, I know where to look for it and it's not being used up in some other scrappy project or something like that. So yeah, so that's my sock adventure. I have not cast on another sock. I'm going to take a little break. I am interested in maybe doing, trying some color work socks. I'm probably gonna try an Andrea Mowry pattern just because it seems like the fit of her socks, like she, she probably struggles with similar fit issues that I do, so maybe that is um, my best bet. But I also saw this really beautiful, I'll try to find a picture to put it on screen so you can see it, but I, I don't know what the pattern is, but I saw it on Instagram, it's gorgeous color work pattern that was like it was a Norwegian knitter I think and it had butterflies it was so pretty it was like red and white really really gorgeous I have no idea what the pattern is but I'll, I'll sleuth it and figure it out um I don't know if that's a little too advanced for me I might just do the sparky socks or spark socks that are based on the you know the dot and dash um pattern that is in uh, the spark cardigan. So that's a swatch for the spark cardigan that I'm gonna make, I don't know, sometime later um, this year. Okay, Martha's wearing the Meeps NYPZ crochet jacket. That was really challenging me. It is done though, according to um, the, the pattern I have completed it. I made, uh, by the way, I didn't talk about this last time, but I made the small medium. It only comes in two sizes, small, medium, and a uh, large, extra large, I think. And yeah, I bought the kit um, and have knit. So that's the back. It's really big. I knit it right to pattern. Like I didn't do, the only thing I did differently, did two things differently. In terms of the size and the number of rows, my gauge was spot on. Everything um, worked. Here's the what the hood would look like if it were. Oh, you really can't see. Hang on. There you go. Now you can see. There's what the hood looks like. It's really cute. I think it's. Um, it looks really cute on. The sleeves are gargantuan. Um, there's a couple things, so I wrote, if you're interested in making this, I'm gonna tell you briefly here. 
but I wrote really copious notes about this pattern in my um, on my Ravelry project page. Um, the things that I chose to do and some caution cautionary things, which I'll go over here too. So one thing is the pattern has you knit the sleeves first, which means you really don't, because you're, you don't have your front and back and they're not joined, you, are, you don't really have any idea whether the sleeves are going to be long enough for you or too long or whatever. I would, if I were doing this again, knit the front and back first, join the shoulders, do the shoulder join, and then knit the sleeves and figure out where, how long the sleeve should be. Because these ended up being quite a bit longer than I needed. Um, I don't think I'm going to go back and rip out at all, but I could probably have shortened them by three or four inches, um, which would have been, a, you know, nice to have that yarn because yarn was definitely a concern while knitting this. Um, so that's one thing she has her, I have her, <laughs> the wrist in there because the sleeves are so long. So also this is still a little damp, this sweater. Um, I, I like to wet block everything. I um, learned long ago that, uh, so when I first learned to knit, nobody wet blocked, at least not here in the States. It wasn't in the patterns. It probably just said block um, without really a lot of instruction. So um, I learned to wet block later and after years and years of steam blocking and I just don't think you get like I don't think the fiber really comes into its own without wet blocking like I really think that wet blocking brings puts settles the fiber into the stitch that you've done and also removes it um, acts to remove any residue of grease or anything that is used to spin yarn and so I think you really get your full enhanced this is what your yarn is meant to be with a wet block. So I wet block this and it has been drying for like three days and it's still damp. Um, so as soon as I'm done filming, this will go right back on the ground instead of hanging here. Um, Cause I'm afraid the sleeves are gonna just keep growing. They're so long, oh my gosh, crazy. Um, okay, couple other things I did, I do think I brought over, yeah, okay. Here's what I have left yarn wise, which is not much. I'm just taking that out because that was extra. Oh, this was extra too. This is all I have left. Um, just little dribs and drabs of like five of the colors. Um, and these, these were probably my least favorite colors, though I didn't mind the white or the coral. I didn't love this green. Okay. One of the things you should know besides the sleeves, the second thing you should know besides the sleeves is that this trim, if you want your trim to be uniform, you need almost an, two entire skeins. So the kit comes with um, 16 balls and it's chunky mohair. Turns out the yarn is exactly the same from Wool and the Gang. Um, same exact yarn, same exact maker. So I purchased here, I did try to actually, I started with um, going on to um, uh, Meep's website and purchase, I tried to purchase a second skein of the hot pink, the neon pink and the neon yellow, which I don't really know if there's an easy spot to see it. Yeah, here, this neon, this it's very neon, doesn't look so neon on screen, but it's like really neon like highlighter yellow. I went on to their website because I could tell, I talked about this last time, as I was crocheting the pieces that I wasn't going to have as much pink as I wanted to have, nor was I going to have anywhere near the look of what was in the picture um, in terms of the amount of pink because they very definitely in that sample used a strand of neon pink and black for the entire trimming. The entire trimming takes 40 grams of yarn and each of these balls from Meeps and from Wool and the Gang are 50 grams. So you need almost the entire skein of two colors if you want consistent colored trim. Um, I figured out I figured that out probably about halfway through the project where I was just like, wait a minute, it looks like they're using pink in the trim. I really want to use pink in the trim as well. 
So I went to Wool and the Gang, and the, what the pink I was able to get is this one. What I'm not telling you is that the reason I didn't buy it from Meeps was, though it was about 10 euro a ball, it was going to cost me 30 euro to ship it here. So that prompted me to look around to find a comparable yarn that I could get for much less shipping here in the States, and I found wool in the gang. Also want to compliment my viewer who asked me about this because that um, prompted me to look for it for myself as well as for her. Um, it is a, called bright pink, but it's not neon, so you can see that it's not, it's not the neon pink that uh, it would be more like this kind of side by side. Um, and I bought a second skein of yellow, and this is more of a butter yellow versus the neon yellow, the highlighter yellow that came with the kit. I'm so glad I did because I just decided when this came, okay, I'm just going to set this aside for trimming, and I ended up using almost the entire skein. I used a little bit of this, not much. But imagine if I hadn't done that what my trim would look like just using this these dribs and drabs that i have left in here i don't even know if i have 50 grams here and also the black so i had used the black somewhat i think i used it in yeah i used it a bit here there's a little bit in the sleeve actually in both sleeves there's a little bit in both sleeves that was all i used the black for i used that used 15 grams so I only had 35 grams so actually on my cuffs I used the dark purple and I don't really think you can tell it looks pretty similar yeah so what a bummer that was um, I wished it said that in the instructions that if you want uniform trim hold off you save practically an entire skein almost an entire skein 40 grams of each color to do that yeah so just be warned that's something you should do um, the entire kit that I got came with 16 balls and 16 different colors and I talked a lot about the my frustration with the colors that were included because um, out of the 16 colors 10 were unique but the other three and three were very similar to each other so these three were similar and these three were similar and I just thought to myself, well, you know, you've knitted a sample clearly using two balls of pink yarn, if not more. Why didn't you just include more hot pink? Or at least leave that as an option for people that are purchasing the kit. Um, so that was kind of a frustration for me. Um, but otherwise, I mean, it was a pretty fun uh, crochet project. It was very fast. You work on a very big crochet hook, a size P, I think it is. 15 millimeter crochet hook. Uh, so it's quite large. You're holding two strands together. So you're doing a lot of color mixing. I mean, the, the other thing that I did figure out was that in order to get green, you need to mix together, you need to mix yellow in to have like this bright sort of, um, this type of green. So this, this type of green is not in here. Um, and you know, there were probably a little bit more earth tones in it than I liked, than I probably would have picked for myself. But I mean, over I think the overall effect is quite nice. Um, and it's, I mean, it's a cool striking piece. <laughs> so for all of that, I am glad I made it. It is definitely an outer piece. I cannot imagine trying to fit these massive sleeves into a coat unless it was like one of those very big drapey um, coats. I mean, my, my arms are pretty big anyway, cause I, I weight train. So I have like a pretty big bicep, um, compared to other women that are my size. So, um, I already struggle with like getting my, <laughs> my arm through a lot of coats. I have to make sure I get a little bit bigger armhole. I do not think I could fit this through any kind of coat. So this would be like an outer piece um, it'll be great for the fall and, you know, the transitional weather months, um, fall and spring in this region. And it's, it, and like I said, it's quite striking. I l really love the way it came out. I am um, 
perfectly happy with the way the trim came out. Um, oh, I added this. This was a modification that I did. I just wanted a little bit more coordination of the, you know, the whole trimming effect. Um, yeah, I do really love it. I can't wait to wear it. There's one more mod I may do. So you can let me know what you think. I thought about like, cause I know myself and I know when um, I wear this, if it is transitional weather, I'm gonna wanna be able to close it. So I'm thinking about maybe adding buttons. So I'll just like shove one of these through so you can see. Um, I'm either gonna add buttons, so it would be something like that. Of course centered though. And there'd be six of them. These are some vintage buttons that I got, um, that, I've ha that I got in my button box, which I showed in last um, episode, in episode 14. I only have three of those though, so I went, I did a little search on Etsy and I was able to find the exact same button um, from a Etsy shop vendor. So it's a um, shell button made out of shell, a smoke colored shell. It's probably, there you go. Can see the back. That's the shell back. It's probably um, pretty old. Uh, I don't. I mean, I guess you can still find shell buttons. Yeah, you can still find shell buttons made today. Um, these are vintage, and those are vintage. These are slightly bigger. I think this is one in a sixteenth inch, and this is one in an eighth. So it'll be a little bit smaller of a look uh, on the placket there and it turns out those holes are big enough that I don't I didn't need to make a buttonhole so I'm either going to do that or I'm going to put a zipper can't decide and this zipper I think I figured out this zipper was just long enough to reach to where the oh no that was before blocking now that it's been blocked yeah, this is too short a zipper. So I'd have to buy a bigger one. Um, the thing with the zipper is that it would mean that it would join like that and this would be like this really thick stripe. I, I, I guess I wish that if I was thinking ahead about doing a zipper, I probably would have just done two rows of trim and I could go back and take it out, but I don't think I wanna do that. I don't think I'm gonna skip that. Um, but yeah, tell me, tell me what you think, I'd be curious. I'm doing one or the other. I'm doing buttons or a zipper. I just don't know which. Oh, and this zipper is a separating zipper. Um, so it would be a separating zipper that would open at the bottom. Yeah, there we go. Those are my finished objects. I know at least one viewer is is going. I went ahead and bought the pattern and is planning to make this jacket. So uh, I hope my um, notes and modifications help you uh, make a, you know, not struggle with some of the things that I struggled with. Did I tell you everything? I think everything else worked out fine. Um, the seaming part, that was another thing, like piecing it together. She calls it meshing. And as far as I could tell, that's not a term that we use in um, US in, when we're talking about joining crochet joins. Cause I watched her video on meshing and it was a knit garment. So that was a little bit annoying because I wasn't quite clear, but through trial and error, I realized like the, what she shows in the knit video is exactly what you should be doing. And you're, the way you do it, it's very interesting. You lay the two pieces next to each other and where you want to join them right sides up and you're stitching with right side up, which was sort of a little, I was a little like, am I doing this right? But it worked out fine. Like the um, joints are pretty, um, you know, pretty hidden. I ended up using like a neutral, one of the neutral colors in here. She said in it that you could use regular yarn, but, and not, you know, that it worked quite well because it was still gonna be invisible. But I, I mean, I had enough of this by that time that I was like, These, this is fine. Yeah, you can see it here, I guess, on the pocket joins. But not too bad. Not too bad. I don't think these pockets are really usable either, but they're cute. You could throw, like, keys in there, I guess. Because if, if you really wanted to use these pockets, you should line them. 
um, because things are just going to poke through. Yeah, I guess you could put a phone in there too, maybe. Okay, that is uh, my crochet bomber jacket. I was thinking before I realized that I probably wasn't going to Rhinebeck due to my granddaughter's birthday that uh, I would wear this to Rhinebeck. I was thinking it would be really cool to wear as an outer garment to Rhinebeck. Um, you know, if it turns out my son is like, don't come because it's too scary uh, in terms of the virus, I may end up going to Rhinebeck and then I will wear that. <laughs> So we'll see. We'll see. I had this whole outfit in my head. Um, yay. So that is, uh, that is all my finished objects. And uh, now I'm going to update you on some of my whips and share some new cast-ons. opportunity to uh, take off my sweater it's really hot <laughs> it's like I think it's gonna be 90 today so it's very hot even though inside is air-conditioned um, yeah it was just kind of a little sweaty sitting here under the lights and stuff uh, okay let's start with my oldest whip <laughs> which I'm just still plodding along um, yeah it's okay it's the open edge tea by Jessie Maid that came out in I want to say June maybe end of May towards the end of May um, I'm knitting it out of yarn love yarn in the uh, princess buttercup fingering which is a silk linen blend in the colorway living coral um, so I put in a few rows here and there kind of losing steam on it only because it it uh it's you know summer is going to be over before I get this done it feels like it's just taking so long um because I haven't really spent time I've been working on other things so I this is one of the reasons why I've decided not to cast on another sock because this can be very easily my travel knit um I've got it in my Jezebel bag um which is, you know, loops, you loop your arm through and you can be working on it. Uh, so, so that is the plan. Hopefully I'll finish it. Um, a new tank top came out from Pearl Soho by the same designer who did my, um, the center point popover. And I thought about frogging this and casting that on instead because this yarn would be perfect for it. They, um, it, she designed it for their 100% silk fingering weight yarn. But yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish this. I'll, I'll make that tank top next summer. Um, but my other continuing whip I talked about last week is uh, the Spots Pullover by Anne Benzel. And I, I made a little bit of progress. Um, I I became preoccupied with a new whip, which I'm going to show you. Um, and you probably guess, if you follow me on Instagram, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, so I, with these, with this pattern, I am in the point where I've got to make 10 of these triangular motifs. I think I have like five and a half done. So I make 10 to, and then I split for the sleeves. Um, and it's just kind of slow going. I, uh, I did another color work. I have another color work whip, which I'm gonna show you in a sec, that uh, kind of made my hand, my, my left forearm sore because I, I, when I do color work, I, um, like many people, I hold a color in each hand 
like this. So that way I can just knit um, more quickly without having to put, pick up the yarn, uh, drop the yarn and pick up a new yarn. So yeah, I my what happens because I'm not used to using this hand for that to tension yarn, I end up getting like some soreness in my forearm. And my forearm was getting a little sore, so I did ended up not um, knitting on this as much um, as I probably would have if I if I you know this was the only color all over color work I was doing. Um, so I'm now through the color work to two handed knitting part of that other project. So this will you know can move back into that position for me in terms of my projects. Um, my first time making an Anne Vinzel uh, pattern. I have heard from a couple people <laughs> that uh, the frustrations I expressed about the pattern last week or in last episode uh, were familiar <laughs> to them as well. Um, she has terrific patterns and in terms of the designs, but they are, you know, there might be some stuff, she's Danish, so there may be some stuff lost in the translation of the pattern or it may just be that rather you know, pithy way that Scandinavians can write their patterns compared to what we're used to learn, you know, understanding in this culture. So anyway, yarns, yarns, yarns. The darker red that you're seeing is one of my own hand spuns. It is 100% Corridale, no, Corridale and Sea Cell, which is a plant fiber. Um, yeah, Corridale and Sea Cell, mostly Corridale. Um, from Countess Ablaze in the colorway Hearts Beguilement that I spun. It was one of my first sweater quantities that I probably spun in 2019. It's a little overspun, <laughs> so it's a little ropey, um, but I think it's working fine in this color work. I, you know, I really, really love the way it's coming out. Um, it's about to get into an area that is a little bit more turquoise, so I'm interested to see how that's going to look. I think it's going to be pretty cool. So I'll get somewhat of a gradient um, effect in the color work. My main color, the pattern calls for you to hold a skein of fingering weight and a skein of mohair together, or you can, I think you can do, the main color can also be three strands of mohair. Uh, I'm using sport weight, so I am getting a little bit bigger gauge than uh, the what the pattern called for. So I'm knitting two sizes smaller than I usually do. Um, and that just means like, so when you go up yarn size significantly like that, and then you end up knitting a smaller size, the only thing you really need to keep an eye on is your row count. So, and that's mostly for the armhole, um, uh, fit. So I'll keep an eye on that as I'm going. So far so good. I think I'm going to end up doing exactly what the size uh, small instructions call for. Um, I think it, and I don't think it'll end up fine, but I'll, I'll be checking that out as I, you know, make more progress on this. Uh, these two are from Camilla Fiber Company. Uh, I think they're out of Tennessee in the U.S., she does limited colors that sort of jive with the season. So this was one that she had done in the springtime and it was called Clay Dust. Um, yeah, limit, so I don't know if she does it every, I don't know if she, I don't really know her company, um, uh, you know, the ins and outs of the way she designs her colors and all of that. But I was really happy to get a sweater's quantity of both of these with, the, and I intended to hold them together to knit a sweater, but I didn't know what, and I just put them aside until the right um, sweater came along. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with uh, the way this looks so far. I do really love the color combo. It matches the wall behind me. <laughs> oh my goodness. I uh, probably would not have picked this wall color <laughs> for myself. Um, this used to be my son's room, so they picked it. All right, yeah, new, so <laughs> I have a clip for you to watch with, before I show you this next cast on. Hey, I just wanted to do a little check-in on, um, this pattern here. This is Illuminate by Andrea Mowry. 
Um, you can see I've got all the color work done pretty much. I'm working on the striping section now. I, yeah, so what can I tell you so far? I am using this color from Spin Cycle called Evil Eye, and I, you know, in hindsight is 2020, they say, I used my darkest skein for the color work. I don't know why I thought that that was a good idea. I think I was thinking, let me just get that dark color across the top where it'll spread out and look like less of the sweater than if I use it, say, on a sleeve or in the rest of the body. But so this is my second ball. Um, there is a section, this one is missing, that has like kind of a, a gold red tone. I think you can maybe see it there. That's the end of the last skein. Um, the other thing I can tell you about working this purple yarn is that it really, look at my finger, <laughs> it really crocks a lot. Um, besides being mohair and just dropping hair everywhere. I really wish I pre-washed these skeins because um, they're going to bleed. And I do have a, um, I'll show you later, uh, I do have a solution to that. So um, we'll see. But this was such a fast knit. I just went right through this entire pattern. The um, stitches, stitch count in the repeat here in this big motif is pretty big. I want to say it's around 20 stitches, maybe more. And I only was doing it six, seven times around um, the yoke. It must have been such a challenge to grade um, the pattern with those big yokes. I mean, th that big repeat. But yeah, I am a I'm about to split for the sleeves. I have a, uh, um, one more row to knit and then I'll be splitting for the sleeve so it's coming along I like it it's a low contrast when you do such a dark color of mohair with a dark color of um, spin cycle but I think that's the intent with this pattern um, I'm happy with it <laughs> I know some but some people would want more higher contrast but I actually think this is really cool um. I, I can't remember how much I told you about it last time. I know I hadn't cast it on. I think I maybe had some yarn. Oh, I think I talked about the original yarn I was planning to use um, with, and, and I, so I bought the mohair first <laughs> because I was planning to use that with some yarn that I had from Stitch Together Studio, but when I swatched, it just didn't look right. Um, it was a little, it's a thinner yarn than the dyed in the wool, and it, it just, I don't know, I didn't want to fudge yet another pattern I kind of just thought you know what I should just go for it and make it the way it was intended without trying to um, do too much and I've done I've gotten quite a bit done even since that um, clip and with the stripes I think I figured out I've got to do 16 stripes and I maybe have uh, one two three four five I think I have about 10 so I think I have about six or seven more stripes to go before I do the rib bottom um yeah so these are so I bought the I bought the mohair first the mohair came it was meant to go with this purpley pink yarn I had on hand in my stash and uh then I just like it's really kind of a crapshoot when you're buying spin cycle like you're looking at a picture you're not really sure what you're getting it's so much easier to buy in person. And then also, once you get it and you cake it, it really looks different. Um, so I, um, yeah, I was really keeping my fingers crossed on this. And I just, when it came, I was like, uh, I think I'm okay. And, you know, maybe I'm going to have kind of a low contrast. But I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. I think it really looks cool. It's very witchy looking to me. Um, I love the uh, the goldy green to blue fade that happens with this color, Evil Eye from Spin Cycle. Um, one thing I realized in looking at the pictures from the test knitters of this pattern was that the mohair can be very dominant. And when you're looking at the pictures, like the color that jumps out at you is often the mohair. Um, so I am happy that I chose a darker mohair that sort of recedes and 
can really highlight the um, spin cycle yarn a little bit better. I think that is the key to this pattern, in my view, anyway, when you're picking your colors, if you haven't already. I think that's really key. I think people that, unless you really, really love the mohair color that you're you're knitting with, like unless that's the color that you're going for, like that's what you want people to see, pick a dark mohair and let it, let it fade into the background and push your spin cycle forward. That was what I was interested in. A um, couple things to note is that the this is unblocked, of course, so that color work will open up in blocking. I have a lot of, um, I could see as I, maybe I could pull it open for you a little bit. Let's see if I can, eh, maybe a little. So those are going to come out even more. Um, I'm on my second skein of spin cycle. It takes a total of four for my size. And I think I'm kind of in the middle of the um, uh, of the size range, towards like maybe the fourth size or so in. So I have a skein that looks like this, with quite a lot of gold, like kind of a good mix. And then I have a second skein that's kind of a good mix too. And I was I was thinking to myself, those would be better sleeves. This one that I've almost used up is pra was practically all blues and greens with very little gold. And the one on top was uh, pretty dark. Like it was kind of this, but darker, a little darker. Uh, I mean, that's just what happens when you when you buy um, Spin Cycle. You just, you don't, I mean, looking at those skeins together, they all look the same. But when I got home and caked them, I found all these like nuances to them. <laughs> I just got a phone call so um, that I had to take and I'm gonna try to pick up where I was. Yeah, so I think I was saying that these spin cycle yarns, uh, even like looking at them in the skein, they look the same and then you get more nuance um, as, you, as you cake them. Oh, and I was gonna say, I know some people actively manage their color of their spin cycle and how it knits. I'm, that's too much work for me and I, I kind of like <laughs> the surprise that happens when you just kind of put stuff together and just let things just kind of be. I think that's part of it. Like that I, I've knit sweaters where I've just allowed pooling to happen and um, without alternating skeins and stuff because that's, that's a whole other headache. <laughs> so um, I guess you could alternate skeins for this if you, if you really wanted to. Um, if you didn't want to color manage, that would be one way to color manage where you would get, you know, probably more of a mix and less gradient. Um, but yeah, so far, so far, so good. I also think, so they have you buy, the pattern has you buy three skeins of the mohair and I suspect I won't use more than two. I don't have any spinning clips. Um, this is going to be very short. Um, I finished my uh, Marl Brown yarn from John Arvin. Um, this was their mill special for their 20th anniversary. That was just this year at the beginning of June. Uh, this is a blend of... There you go. Swarbolt. Corydale and Exmoor Blueface. Um, this was the dark. There was also a light. Um, this is scrumptious, scrumptious yarn. Um, I've caked it. I actually have all three skeins caked. I think last time I had two skeins done. Um, so I did finish the third skein. I caked it because I was planning to use this for the, the John Arben knit along and I swatched it. You can get a gander at the swatch. It's really pretty. I just, you know, a couple things, two things with this. I love it, absolutely love it. I'm a little bit bummed it spun up a little bit thicker 
than I intended. It's probably like a light DK or heavy sport. And because of that, I only bought 300 grams because I was planning to make a fingering weight. Because it spun a little thicker, uh, I only ended up with about 800 yards. And uh, that limits what I can make with it. Like it would be good with color work. If I put in another color and did a significant amount of the sweater using some, you know, like in a color work yoke kind of scenario or maybe like a shifty kind of scenario, um, it would be fine, it's plenty. But uh, with just 800, doing it by itself means I'm making a crop sweater or maybe I'm doing three quarter sleeves, which is fine, like I'm cool, cool with that. But I just didn't have a pattern off the top of my head um, that I really wanted to make with it. Um, and yeah, so I just decided like, and then I was like, well, I have this other John Arbin yarn. I should just make that. So why am I, why am I having, you know, all these, like let this, instead of forcing this into something, let me just let it sit and I'll think about, um, what that something should be. Um, so yeah, that is, that's the plan with that. Uh, and then I didn't spin any more, um, because of some just busy with other things and I will get back to spinning. I'm going to finish um, up a sweater's quantity, as I said, of John Arbin and I have a second sweater's quantity that I haven't started that I also want to do. Because uh, they're both going to be this marled, like similar in that marl, like it's going to be like pretty much from far away it's going to look like a solid color but up close you'll see like some heathering and stuff. So they're both like heathers I guess is probably a better way to say it. So yeah, so there, I, I, I have a, I have a dearth of a, you know, an absence of uh, tonal <laughs> solid sweater quantities. I seem to have lots of sweater quantities that are highly colorful and speckled. So um, having some tonal sweater quantities will be, will be nice. Uh, okay, last thing for you stash acquisitions and then I have a tiny little chat like lifestyle ish chat to do with you um stash acquisitions was super special I didn't tell you this and I say this in the clip but I did not tell you but I won the grand prize for my spin a lot from my spinning team um for tour de fleece and I was in shock um, the grand prize is really spectacular, so I'm going to just show you. I opened it with you on camera, so I'm going to just show you that clip and see you back here. Massive package. I haven't opened it. I just uh, cut this open, so I have no idea what's in here, so I'm going to look at it with you. Oh, whoa. There's, it's a tote bag. Oh, my God. Look at this. Okay. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited. Um, okay, an art bat called Grim Grinning Ghosts. Oh, that's so beautiful. I love it. I have another bat also from Green Goat Ranch called Madame Liotta. Also really beautiful. Little batlings from Wool and the Dame called Mixed Berries. Wow, there's kind of a purple-blue theme going on here. Oh my gosh, and it doesn't stop, there's more. This is so fantastic. <gasps> wow, really beautiful. I love this one. And this one, very, very pretty. I'm so excited to spin them. I, I mean, I know already these are gonna be socks. <laughs> Look at those. They'll be the best socks. Yeah, super, super excited to spin these. So these may also, you may be seeing some of these coming up in um, the next couple weeks, um, spinning wise. So I have a lot of editing to do. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is, I hope that when you watch this, that it's smooth. 
but there is a lot of disjointedness to this guest. I completely forgot to talk about the giveaway winners. I don't know where I'm going to stick this in, um, into the whole thing, but I finished. I thought I finished, and then I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't talk about the giveaway. Um, okay, so I will put on screen the giveaway winners now because it is Friday afternoon and I said there was until Friday night to, to enter. I will leave that open um, until tonight and in editing tomorrow I will put the winners here on screen. Please email me. My email is down in the description. Um, I'm actually probably going to message the winners as well back on episode 14. Um, and I'll just comment to you saying, hey, you won. Please get in touch with me. Um, so that'll just, and I'll have put my email there. So that'll, that'll simplify everything. So by the time this airs, you will have gotten a response from me on your comment um, saying you won. Um, yeah, so I guess it kind of doesn't matter where I stick this in. But hey, congratulations, you won. What did you win? Some beautiful hand spun by me. Um, this little set, this little hand spun set, red. You either won red <laughs> or you won green. Red or green. Um, I think it's enough for a hat, I would guess. You could do a hat or you could do whatever you want. You could probably use it as a contrast color in another um, knit somewhere. So yeah, as soon as I hear from those winners and get their addresses, I will send that out to you. And yay, congratulations. All so, right, I actually don't remember what it was I was gonna talk to you about lifestyle-wise. So we're gonna put that up, put a pin in that, come back to it maybe next time. Um, I, I hope you have a good next couple weeks. I know this is like kind of a popular vacation time, August. A lot of people, especially with children, end up going away in August and getting some, you know, relaxation in ahead of the new school year starting. So I hope, you know, if that's you, you stay safe and you're in a, you know, you're heading to an area where, um, you know, people respect the mask <laughs> and uh, understand the, um, you know, the dangers, the health dangers and that you stay safe i hope you stay safe and well and uh yeah i look forward to spending more time with you next time and i will see you again soon bye